Hello there, it's Simon here with your Tao Daily video for Thursday the 13th of June 2024. Yesterday was CPI day and FOMC day. So the CPI print, it's the first kind of genuinely benign CPI print we've had in a few months with both uh, core and headline inflation month on month uh, undercutting expectations. Um, the market loved that. We, we S&P opened higher and then continued to rally. Uh, and it was only really after the Fed press conference that some of those gains were given back. It was still a, still a bullish close. S&P still closed up 0.82 of a percent. Um, little gap and go pattern here, but you can see it closed off its highs, actually closed below the open by, by the barest of margins. So why might that be? Well, um, Powell was, he was neither explicitly bullish, uh, sorry, dovish or hawkish. It was a kind of a not, a, not an easy to read press conference. I mean, I think his comments were generally dovish, but when you look at things like the dot plot, I mean, the dot plot is kind of all over the place. It's a, a big scatter diagram. But, um, but the, the Fed's dot plot points to only one rate cut this year, not, to, not the two that the market is looking for. And the summary of economic projections has increased their forecast for core PCE, which is the Fed's preferred inflation measure, that's uh, gone up from 2.6% to 2.8%, which is the, the current level. So that's the Fed implicitly saying they don't expect any more progress to be made on inflation for the balance of the year. Now, the market is, was quickly to price in a September cut. We're now at an 85% chance of a cut in September. Uh, I would think that a, a cut immediately before the election could cause some communi communication headaches for the FOMC and a cut is probably more likely in November or December but honestly the market this year has been very very good at taking a disappointment about uh, the number of rate cuts in its stride. So where does that leave us? Well it leaves us a little bit extended here. Um, you can see, particularly if we look at the NASDAQ, uh, the NASDAQ is looking extended. When, whenever we get to this red line, uh, a pullback to the mean, which is the white line in the middle, becomes you know, an increasing probability. So this isn't really an environment where I, I, I want to get massively long or, or chase long exposure. And of course, most of the sectors that have been performing well uh, are now looking at pretty extended, whether it's semiconductors, whether it's tech, I still think we're in a bullish environment. I think we, you know, we, we wait and buy the dip, but uh, chasing moves that are already well underway is just a recipe for tears. Now, things can obviously still keep going higher. All right, if we look at um, NASDAQ futures, uh, it looks like they're up very, very strongly uh, in overnight trade. So just because something is extended to the upside, it doesn't mean it can't keep going higher. It just means your odds are diminished. Okay, I would always rather buy here or here than uh, up here or up here, or for that matter, up here. That's what I got for you today. I hope it helps, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you.